Derek Harper was a point guard that could do a bit of everything at a high level, from knocking down shots, to setting up teammates with passes, to lock down defense on other teams' best players, helping him become a two-time all-defensive player as he played the perfect complementary player guiding the Mavericks to playoff success, cementing himself as one of the Mavericks' best players for his continual growth with the team, doing whatever they asked of him. This is a look back on Derek Harper's career. Derek Harper was born in Elberton, Georgia, and later he went on and moved to West Palm Beach playing his high school basketball at North Shore. And while there, Harper developed into one of the best players in the country, becoming a parade All-American. And with multiple schools after Harper, he would decide to attend Illinois because he was guaranteed playing time early on. Derek Harper's first two years at Illinois would be the starting point guard, with his role primarily being the facilitator and locking down the other team's best player leading the team in assists along the way. Harper's junior year would be different as he would become the team's leading scorer and go-to guy, seeing himself on the season average 15.4 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 3.7 assists, helping Illinois make the NCAA tournament, where they unfortunately would be bounced pretty early. But for his efforts, he was awarded all Big Ten and made second team All-American. And after the breakout year, the NBA came a-calling Derek Harper's name, with him proving to be more than just a defender and a facilitator. Harper entered his name into the NBA draft, foregoing his senior season. And in the 1983 NBA draft, with the 11th overall pick, the Dallas Mavericks selected Derek Harper. Derek Harper was joining a playoff-caliber Mavericks team led by Mark Aguirre and Orlando Blackman. With the team competing, Derek Harper found himself coming off the bench as a backup point guard to Brad Davis. Derek Harper's rookie year, as a result, averaged 5.7 points, 2.9 assists, and 1.2 steals, helping the Mavericks go 43-39, and making the playoffs as a four seed. In round one, the Mavericks met the Seattle Supersonics, headed by Gus Williams, Jack Sigma, and Tom Chambers. The series had several close games, with the Mavericks being able to slow down Tom Chambers outside of a Game 2 performance from him seeing the series go to a Game 5, and in Game 5, the Mavericks took the lead early on. The Sonics rallied behind Gus Williams' play down the stretch, but the Mavericks held on for the victory, winning the series 3-2. In Round 2, the Mavericks would get the one-seeded Los Angeles Lakers, with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, Jamal Wilkes, and James Worthy. The Lakers jumped out to a quick start, handling the Mavericks the first two games before the Mavs pulled one back with a big Game 3 from Rolando Blackman. Game 4 was close throughout, with the Mavericks having the chance late to tie the series up, having the ball with the game tied, before Derek Harper made a costly mistake in dribbling out the clock, not realizing time was left in the game. And in overtime, the Lakers would win and then steamroll them in Game 5, sending the Mavericks home early. The series loss was put on Harper's head by most, but he would use it as a learning lesson in moment and had a chip on his shoulder here on out going forward. And in Derek Harper's first playoff experience as a rookie, he averaged 5 points, 2.8 assists, and 1.1 steals. In the offseason, the Mavericks continued to improve through the draft, selecting Sam Perkins. And Derek Harper seemed to be more focused this season, improving his play as the backup point guard, eventually seeing himself become the sixth man in year two, where Harper averaged 9.6 points, 4.4 assists, and 1.8 steals. And on the year, the Mavericks looked similar to the prior year, going 44-38, and 38, getting a 4 seed. Round 1, the Dallas Mavericks faced the Portland Trailblazers, who had Kiki Vandeweghe, Jim Paxson, Michael Thompson, and Clyde Drexler leading him. Rolando Blackman started the series off insanely hot from the floor, helping the Mavericks take Game 1. And this only seemed to wake up the Blazers on the other hand, as they would win the next three games as Audie Norris sent the Mavericks home with a game winner ending the series 3-1. Over the series, Derek Harper averaged 6.5 points, 1.5 steals, and 5 assists. Derek Harper next season only to continue to improve his game, earning some starts this season, as his numbers jumped up to 12.2 points, 5.3 assists, and 1.9 steals a game. The Mavericks also improved, acquiring James Donaldson via a trade mid-year. Yet the Mavericks still seemed to be in the same spot at the end of the regular season, going 44-38. and Round 1, the Mavericks faced the Utah Jazz, who were led by Carl Malone, Thurl Bailey, Mark Eaton, and John Stockton. The series was close at times, but the Mavericks had more playoff and veteran experience at the time, helping them win the series rather convincingly 3-1. In Round 2, the Mavericks met a familiar foe in the playoffs in the Los Angeles Lakers, 
It looks slightly different this time, no longer having Jamal Wilkes on the team, but Byron Scott was starting to emerge, filling his role within the offense. The first two games were all LA, defeating the Mavericks soundly. In Game 3, the Mavericks would pull one back as Derek Harper, this time in the clutch moment against the Lakers, came up big, writing his prior moments wrong, hitting the game winner. Game 4 was also a close down the stretch thanks to Aguirre's play and would win the game as Kareem missed a game-tying skyhook at the horn, tying the series up. Yet as things were going right for the Mavericks, they would crumble the next two games, seeing the Lakers send them home 4-2. This playoff, Derek Harper had earned the starting role where he played great, showing promise in the future, as he averaged 13.4 points, 7.6 assists, and led the playoffs with 2.3 steals a game. Derek Harper entered next season as the starting point guard for the first time, where he did not disappoint, bumping up his averages to 16 points a game, 7.9 assists, and 2.2 steals, all while locking down defenders nonstop, becoming second team all defense truly doing it all in the year, helping the Mavericks jump and improve to 55-27, and 27, getting a two-seed in a round one matchup against the Seattle Supersonics, now led by Tom Chambers, Xavier McDaniel, and Dale Ellis. The Mavericks dominated game one of this series, scoring 151 points in the game, but this only seemed to spark the underdog Sonics, as they went on to look like the higher seed, along with James Donaldson going down with an injury later on in the series, the Sonics stunned the Mavericks altogether, winning the series 3-1. Over the series, Derek Harper averaged 16.5 points, 1.8 steals, and 6.8 assists. In the offseason, the Dallas Mavericks would improve again, and drafting well by adding Roy Tarpley to the team. Next season, yet again, Derek Harper was on top of his game, averaging 17 points, 2 steals, and 7.7 .7 assists, helping guide the Mavericks to similar success in the regular season, going 53-29, and getting a 3 seed. Round 1, the Mavericks took down Hakeem Olajuwon and the Houston Rockets. Despite Olajuwon's best efforts, the Mavericks had more depth, winning the series 3-1. Round 2, the Mavericks faced the Denver Nuggets, who were led by Alex English, Michael Adams, and Fat Lever. The series was in favor of the Nuggets early on as they took a 2-1 lead, but the series would be turned around as Fat Lever was unable to go for the remainder of the series with an injury, helping see the Mavericks win the remaining games out and winning the series entirely 4-2. Making it into the Western Conference Finals, the Dallas Mavericks yet again met their playoff foe in the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers seemed to ready and continued their dominance over the Mavericks the first two games, taking both of them. But the Mavericks bounced back at home, seeing the series tied back up after a Game 4 performance from Derek Harper where he scored 35 points. The Lakers won Game 5 back at home, setting up a do or die Game 6 for the Mavericks. In Game 6, the Mavericks responded, holding on late, forcing a Game 7 back in LA. And in Game 7, the Lakers finally would put away the Mavericks behind James Worthy's play, winning the series 4-3 with the Lakers going on to win the NBA championship this season. Derek Harper over the run to the Western Conference Finals averaged 13.5 points, 7.1 assists, and 1.9 steals. Next season, the Mavericks' core would only be broken up despite making the Conference Finals the prior year, as Mark Aguirre was butting heads consistently with coaches and teammates, and the Mavericks decided enough was enough, trading him away to the Detroit Pistons for Adrian Dantley. The move did not affect Derek Harper's role or play within the team, as he went on to average 17.3 points, 2.1 steals, and 7 assists. Yet, the move did seem to change the team. On top of Tarpley and Donaldson missing time this season, the Mavericks would go 38-44, and missing the playoffs. Next year, Derek Harper would continue to take on a larger role, seeing himself average 18 points, 7.4 assists, and 2.3 steals finding himself becoming an all-defensive second team again this season. Harper helped the Mavericks bounce back this season, going 47-35, and getting into the playoffs again as a sixth seed. In round one, the Mavericks matched up against the Portland Trailblazers, headed by Clyde Drexler, Terry Porter, and Jerome Kersey. And despite Blackman and Harper's best efforts, the Mavericks would get swept rather easily 3 to nothing without being able to compete. Over the series, Derek Harper averaged 19.3 points, 7.7 .7 assists, and 1.3 steals. Next season, the things for the Mavericks only got worse, as they no longer had Adrian Dantley, who was released prior to the playoffs the other year because of a leg injury. 
and things did not stop there as Roy Tarpley got suspended for the foreseeable future because of substance abuse. And on top of all this, Sam Perkins left in free agency. The Dallas Mavericks window and chance to contend was officially closed. Derek Harper on the depleted Mavs for the eighth year in a row improved his scoring, which only three players in NBA history have done, averaging 19.7 points to go along with 7.1 assists and 1.9 steals. All the while, the Mavericks went 28 and 54, missing the playoffs. Next season, the Mavericks continued their same form as James Donaldson was traded away, seeing only Blackman and Harper left heading the Mavericks. Derek Harper this season continued his solid form, averaging 17.7 points, 5.7 assists, and 1.6 steals, with the Mavericks failing going 22 and 60. In the offseason, the Mavericks traded away Rolando Blackman to the New York Knicks for a pick, fully cementing the rebuild. The Mavericks had drafted Jim Jackson to fulfill Blackman's role, but he would miss most of the year with a contract dispute. Derek Harper led the Mavericks in scoring and assists again this season with 18.2 points and 5.4 assists to go along with 1.3 steals as one of the lone bright spots on a Mavericks team as they had a historically bad season, going 11-71. Next year, Derek Harper started the year on the Mavericks before they decided to trade him away, continuing their rebuild because Harper no longer fit the team's timeline. The Mavericks traded Derek Harper to the New York Knicks for Tony Campbell and a first round pick that would become John Thomas, in a move that seemed to make Harper happy to be on a competitor again, yet sad that he was leaving the Mavericks who had so many great memories he had created with them. The Knicks had wanted Harper because Doc Rivers was out injured and their title window was now, as they were led by Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason, and John Starks. Derek Harper would play a smaller role in New York, playing behind John Starks, where he averaged 9.6 points, 1.5 steals, and 4.1 assists. Harper and his new role helped the Knicks go 57-25, making the playoffs as a two-seed. In round one, the Knicks matched up against Derek Coleman, Kenny Anderson, and the New Jersey Nets. In a series where the Nets seemed overmatched, going home in a gentleman's sweep with the Nets struggling to handle New York's bigs. In round two, the Knicks would get a matchup against the Chicago Bulls, who did no longer had Michael Jordan, who was off playing baseball, seeing the team now led by Scottie Pippen and Tony Kukoc. With some expecting the Knicks to handle the Bulls rather easily since they nearly beat them the year prior when they had Jordan, Scottie Pippen would prove to provide multiple challenges for the Knicks despite the drama going on after Pippen decided to refuse to play the final seconds of game three since the final shot was not drawn up for him but they would end up winning this game as Kukoc hit the game winner. The series was seeing the teams win their home games in close battles, setting up a game seven in New York, where home court advantage again seemed to play a role as the Knicks behind Patrick Ewing had defeated the Bulls. Awaiting the Knicks for a physical battle, the next round was the Indiana Pacers with Reggie Miller, Rick Smits, Antonio Davis, and Dale Davis. The series again would be all about home court advantage as the Knicks and Pacers split the first four games, setting up a game five at New York where the Knicks would take a lead early on, but would end up choking the game away late behind Reggie Miller's play that was egged on by Spike Lee's antics. With the Pacers up 3-2, it seemed like they were going on and to close out the series in Indiana. However, they would falter just like the Knicks had in game five behind a big game from Starks. Game 7 was back in New York, and the game would be close throughout with Miller and Ewing going blow for blow, before Ewing would put away the game late on a dunk, sending the Knicks to the NBA Finals. In the Finals, the Knicks match up against Hakeem Olajuwon and the Houston Rockets. The series was a defensive and low-scoring one, with the winner always being decided late in the games. The Knicks took advantage of the series and found themselves up 3-2 with an NBA title looking likely. In Game 6, the Knicks would have the ball late and a chance to finish the series off before Elijah Lon would block Stark's game-winning shot setting up a Game 7. Game 7 again was close, but ultimately Hakeem Olajuwon proved to be the best player in the league for a reason, helping the Rockets win the NBA championship. Over the run to the NBA Finals, Derek Harper started the majority of the time, averaging 11.4 points, 4.5 assists, and 1.8 steals. 
Next season, the Knicks continued their strong form as Derek Harper played the starting point guard setting up his teammates again, where he averaged 11.5 points, 5.7 assists, and 1 steal, helping the Knicks go 55-27, and getting a 2 seed, in a round 1 matchup against Mark Price and the Cleveland Cavaliers, where the Cavs seemed to be outmatched from the get-go, with New York having more talent winning the series 3-1. In round two, the Knicks would get the Pacers again, but this time the Pacers had added Mark Jackson improving the team. Game one of the series would be an instant classic for all the wrong reasons for the New York Knicks, as Reggie Miller pulled off an improbable comeback with eight points in nine seconds, taking game one in New York. New York would only win one of the next three games thanks to a big performance in game two from Derek Harper where he scored 24 points, before finding himself in a three to one hole where Patrick Ewing would play the hero in Game 5, hitting the game winner with 1.8 seconds left, extending the series. The Ned and the Knicks went on the road and stole Game 6, setting up a Game 7. Game 7 would be close throughout, setting up another last-second scenario for Ewing to win the game down one point. In a similar play to Game 5, Ewing would get an open shot, but this time would miss the shot, seeing the Knicks go home. Derek Harper, over the postseason, averaged 14.3 points, 1 steal, and 5.6 assists. Next season, Derek Harper stepped up his game again despite aging, averaging 14 points, 4.3 assists, and 1.6 steals. Yet the Knicks looked shakier this season, going 47-35, and 35, getting a 5 seed. Again in round 1, the Knicks faced the Cavaliers, now led by Terrell Brandon, and in a similar result to the prior year, the Knicks swept the Cavs without much of a fight. In round 2, the Knicks met the Chicago Bulls, but this time Michael Jordan was back along with the addition of Dennis Rodman. With Jordan back, the Knicks did not put much of a fight as MJ picked them apart in 5 games before going on to win the NBA championship. Over the postseason, Derek Harper averaged 10 points, 1.3 steals, and 4.8 assists. And in the offseason, the Knicks would decide to waive Derek Harper. Derek Harper was now a free agent and decided to go back to where it all began in the Dallas Mavericks. And the Mavericks were now led by Jamal Mashburn, Jim Jackson, and Jason Kidd. But Harper would not be teammates for very long with any of them, as the front office had put up enough with their antics and in-house bicker, trading them all away with the only key player really being in return in Michael Finley. Then seeing the team led by Chris Gatling before he would get traded away as well after making the NBA All-Star game. With the tumultuous moves, Harper found his role ever changing as the team did. Seeing Derek Harper average 10 points, 4.3 assists, and 1.2 steals, as to no surprise, the Mavericks went 24-58 and missing the playoffs. Before the start of next season, the Mavericks continued their non-stop trading, and this time Derek Harper was traded by the Mavericks for a second time with Ed O'Bannon to the Orlando Magic for Dennis Scott. Harper was joining an aging Magic team led by Horace Grant, Penny Hardaway, and Nick Anderson. Derek Harper found himself as the backup point guard initially to Hardaway before he got injured, with Harper now becoming the starting point guard in the middle of the year on where Harper averaged 8.6 points, 1.1 steals, and 3.5 assists, as the Magic without Hardaway slipped, going 41-41, and 41, missing the playoffs. In the offseason, Derek Harper was a free agent and would sign with the Los Angeles Lakers, who were led by a young Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. Derek Harper split time this season starting and coming off the bench, where he averaged 6.9 points, 1 steal, and 4.2 assists, helping the Lakers go 31-19, and getting a four seed, in a matchup against the Houston Rockets, who had an aging trio of Charles Barkley, Scottie Pippen, and Akeem Olajuwon. The series saw Shaq take over, with Akeem struggling to keep up nowadays, helping the Lakers win the series 3-1. In round two, the Lakers faced the San Antonio Spurs with David Robinson, Sean Elliott, and Tim Duncan. And the series saw Duncan take over, with him becoming the focal point throughout as the Lakers were young and still not formed as the Spurs swept them out of the playoffs. Over the postseason, Derek Harper averaged 4.3 points and 2.1 assists. And this ended up being Derek Harper's final go-around as he decided to retire after the year. Over 16 years in the NBA, Derek Harper averaged 13.3 points, 5.5 assists, and 1.6 steals. And in 2018, Derek Harper would be cemented in Mavericks history as his number 12 was retired by the organization for his efforts over the years. 
Derek Harper will be remembered as a multifaceted point guard who could score the ball, dish the rock to teammates, and lock down the team's other best guards, as he got the most individual recognition for his defensive play, being an all-defensive player twice, with Harper helping the Mavericks and Knicks become championship contenders that fell just short of their goal. Derek Harper may never be the go-to guy on a team, but he definitely knew how to compliment his teammates, garnering the respect of his peers and teammates for his play, with teams knowing it was going to be a long night when they would play and match up against Derek Harper. Thanks for watching this video about Derek Harper's career. If you want to see any other future videos about any random players, leave them in the comments below and I may or may not decide to do them. Thanks again for watching. This has been Skid Denver.